Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video, I wanted to kind of introduce my Algebra 2 practice problem play playlist. And what I want to do with this playlist is pretty much go over problem set pro uh, practice problems that um, involve some very step-by-step -step approaches. But I also want to show you some forewarnings and strategies that will really help us to avoid those very simple mistakes that can be easily made when dealing with these higher level math problems that in, that require a lot of steps. So what we're going to do here is we'll start with this first practice problem and again I'm going to show you the step by step solution and the pathway but I'm also going to point out some very important things along the way um, with these videos. So number one says find the largest value of x such that 3x squared plus 17x plus 15 is equal to 5. So in this first step, what we want to do is we want to make this quadratic equation equal to zero. That way, when we solve for x, we can solve for our roots or solution of this quadratic. So what we're going to do to start is subtract both sides, oops, both sides by 5. This is going to give us 3x squared plus 17x plus 15 or plus 10 is equal to 0 and again I just subtracted both sides by 5 and now I have a quadratic that is equal to 0. Now what I want to do is I want to find a way to factor this quadratic. Now yes lo and behold the quadratic formula is always kind of a go-to um, but in some cases it's more of a last resort. If you have other options to factor a quadratic or any other kind of polynomial by any means um, that is not a quadratic. Factoring is always more efficient if we don't have to do it via the quadratic formula. We don't want to have to go through that whole x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Saying it is a mouthful on its own. But what we're going to do here in this case is we're going to do use a factoring method known as grouping. What we're going to do here is we're going to split this middle term, the 17x, into two terms to where this quadratic will become four terms that we can look at the first and second and find a greatest common factor, and then look at the third and fourth terms and find their greatest common factor, and we'll notice that there is a greatest common factor between those two binomial expressions. Okay, so I know that's kind of a lot without seeing it. So let's go ahead and kind of discuss how we approach this factoring. Now, recall that a quadratic always has the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. What we want to do here is we want to identify a, b, and c. So remember, a, b, and c are just your coefficients of the quadratic in this form itself. So for example, a is going to be the leading coefficient on the x squared term, that's going to be 3. b is going to be the coefficient on the x or the x or the middle term, that's going to be 17. And c is going to be that last term being the constant, so that's going to be 10. So now that we have labeled those, when we're factoring this, we want to do the following. We want to find the factors of a times c that add up to b. So in this case, we're going to find the factors of 3 times 10 that add up to 17, or factors of 30 that add up to 17. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to list all the factors of 30. Now, one thing that's really important here, as I mentioned, I'm going to kind of call out some things that can lead to simple mistakes is you want to make sure that when you are labeling your factors that you label their signs as well. Now I'm going to be, in this case, what's going to happen here is because 17 is positive and because C and A are also positive, then your factors of A and C are both going to be positive. There is no possible way that the factors of 3 and of 30, if one of them was negative, there is no chance for them to add up to negative or to positive 17. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and list the factors and I'll show you what's happening here. So I'll go from highest to lowest, 30 and 1, 15 and 2, uh, 10 and 3, and 6 and 5. So if you were to imagine any of these being negative, let's look at let's look at our actual answer that we're going to be using. So 15 and 2. So both of those have to be positive, not only because they add up to 17, but there's no way that one of them can be negative and their sum still be equal to positive 17. So in this case, both of our factors have to be positive. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this uh, factors of 15 and 2 because they add up to 17 and we're going to rewrite our quadratic here but we're going to substitute in those two factors for 17x so we have 15x plus 2x plus 10 is equal to 0 now what we're going to do is we're going to break up and group these uh, four individual terms into two binomial expressions so let's go ahead and do that. This is going to become 3x squared plus 15x plus 2x plus 10, and then this is still equal to 0. So now what we want to do is we want to factor each of these binomial expressions that we have in parentheses and find their greatest common factor. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a common ground greatest common factor between these two binomial expressions and then we'll be able to find the two binomial expressions that will allow us to solve for our two solutions of x. Remember when we factor a quadratic there's always two solutions for our x values. So what I'm going to do here, the greatest common factor of 3x squared and 15x is going to be 3x. I'm going to have 3x or x plus 5 left over. Then I'm going to do plus. Then I'm going to factor out a 2 and I'm going to get x plus 5 again. So we see that our greatest common factor between these two binomial expressions is x plus 5. And then the other remaining factor is going to be 3x plus 2. So we have the factors of 3x plus 2 and x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now, all that we need to do to solve for which one of our values of x is largest is set both of these factors equal to 0. And that will allow us to solve for our two solutions. So 3x plus 2 equals 0. Um, this is going to be 3x equals negative 2. This is going to be x is, oops, x is equal to negative 2 thirds. So to go into the steps of this, subtract 2 from both sides. 3x is equal to negative 2. Divide both sides by 3. x is equal to negative 2 thirds. Excuse me. For this next one, all we have to do is subtract 5 from both sides, and we get that x is equal to negative 5. Okay. So our values, or our x values, that our solutions or roots to this quadratic are going to be negative 2 thirds and negative 5. Now again, here is a very common simple mistake that a lot of students will make. We want the largest value of these two. So keep in mind that the greater the negative number is actually the smaller value. So our largest value of x here is going to be x is equal to 2 thirds. So our largest value of x is negative 2 thirds. Okay. All right. So Again, this is our first practice problem. If you guys have any questions about this one, please don't hesitate to ask. I hope this helps you out. But um, I will definitely be getting more of these videos up with these problem sets. If you guys have any specific questions about anything that you are learning at the current time, please don't hesitate to send your questions my way as well. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, take good care.